Hi and welcome to another update. Um, it is Thursday the 20th of April 2017. As you can see here, I've just got stopped not too long ago on the YM. It's still good for a short, but I'm not going to take it because I've had a good day and I don't want to give it all back. So I did short here at 21, I got stopped at 30 with one tick of positive slippage. And I'll explain that in a second. But first we'll just have a look at the box score. So it's a good day. Um, maybe I should have left it as it was, maybe I shouldn't. This was an overnight trade on 6A, the Australian uh, dollar versus the US dollar. Got 31 ticks for six ticks risk. That's a 5.17 R trade there overnight in about six hours from three in the morning until like 9, 9.30 in the morning. So obviously I didn't get much sleep last night. Um, and then took this loss here, as I said, with positive slippage on the YM. I'm pretty sure we're gonna see, I mean, it's just probabilities, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna see this low within this session um, without seeing this high being breached. And, um, you know, I probably should have got in again there, but I jumped the gun a little bit, got a little excited after the win last night's pretty big win for me and what I'm used to. So I'm just getting this on record here to say, you know, my target would have been 10% uh, off the lower here. So 362 to 3438, 38 plus 38 76, 7.6, eight ticks, eight ticks off this low, 70. My target would have been 70 from 31 for a 6.1 hour trade. So let's see how that does or doesn't work out. I'll show you what I've been doing recently and the reason why I had a bit of a drawdown earlier on in the week, which I've recovered more than half of that now, um, and, uh, and put myself squarely back in the game. I've been looking at order flow, or the footprint, whatever you wanna call it, footprint, order flow, via time and sales so basically it's gone off the screen now because i only have 25 um, values prints showing on each one this one's filtered for five contract clips this one's filtered for 10 uh, fi uh, five contract clips and above this one's filtered for 10 contract clips and above so looking for people with size in the market and just ignoring smaller people like myself. Well, I don't even have one live contract. If I were live, I'd have one. So I'm ignoring anyone who's trading with any less than five, and then I'm filtering out the ones with 10 for more significance. You could go up to 20 or 30 and so on and put like three tiny cells up, but I find that two is good. And then basically down here at 204.80, we had a block buyer with 83 contracts in one trade so the premise is this let me just get the drawing tool yeah so um that that block buying occurred at 20. oops that's too big let's try that again that occurred at 420 so that was one tick below this because the close is 21 and it occurred in this bar so here you had um 83 contracts bought and if you flip over to the the um, half hour chart which I will just do now let's just bring that over you can see that this is one of my fib levels it's also a reversal candlestick so I'm looking for trapped buyers um, big buyers that are trapped and I'm looking to fade their trade and um, capitalize on them liquidating their losing position so the thesis was this, we had a squeeze um, here, which is pointing up, but we also had a squeeze here, which was pointing up, and all that did was break the prior high and then roll over. Um, and it's been doing that since these highs on whatever date that was, three days ago, so we're, we're on Thursday now, it's Tuesday. Tuesday the, the 18th. These highs at Tuesday. Since then, we've had traps, long traps. So here we had a long trap 
um, turned around, went a bit lower, tried to go higher again, broke this high, went lower, squeeze here, try to go higher, and the thesis is now we're going lower. And before we're going to know whether this, um, the failure point of this pattern will be these lows here, that's why the, the um, target is 10, is 8 ticks or 10% above that low there, that little ledge there. So we see this candle here pointing down, and then the candle fails by Vera close above on the hourly. And, and so that's one sign that we're going higher. And then we had a block buyer, as I said, at 20, which was here at this wick. So number one, we've got a buyer at wicks. So those, that big buyer is going to have to think about liquidating um, if, if things look like they're going to roll over. And if they and if someone with 83 contracts, and I saw some more contracts at the exact same second, so I think they probably split their order into two, so it's more like a hundred contracts. If that does indeed begin to roll over, they're gonna to need to cover and cover in pieces, and that drives the price down. So that's the idea. And then I I got I mean it very well may fail and go up anyway, but um I had uh, 21 here because I could see that after the buyers got long here at 20, the big buyers, um, there was this reversal candlestick here. So that's why I hastily got short here around the same place that they got long um, when I saw signs of a reversal. But the better area would have been up here at 31 because if we go down here on tiny cells, you see more buyers at 31, 15 contracts in a clip, 16 contracts in a clip, all within that 57th minute. Um, now you see tw at 26, we've got 10 more buyers. So buyers are coming in up here while price is showing divergence in terms of volume here and a slightly higher high with wicks. So um, my bet would still be on the downside from here. As I said, 431, just for a bit of fun, it doesn't matter now because I'm not in the trade, but just for a bit of fun, let's see if it can get down to 20370 uh, before breaching. Um, my stop would be at 41, so 2441 with the entry at 431. So that's the, the idea behind how I use or how I'm learning to use um, timing cells and the footprint. Of course, it would be easier if you just had it in on the charts like a lot of people do but I haven't invested in that yet it's just an idea I'm playing with and that is in fact how I got long here and exited here well the exit had nothing to do with timing cells and the footprint that was just a fib level um, but the same um, modus operandi that I explained in the YM trade that's what I was looking for here so we had squeezes going down all the way on the 30 minute chart into a significant level here, down here, and it coincided with fibs. And then I looked to look for the trapped, um, the trapped shorts, because here it broke down on the five minute, gave this little bit of price action here as if it was going to go lower, this bit here, and then gapped above that. And when it gapped, that's when I started to take notice, take note of what was happening. It gapped strongly above, came back down, and I said to myself, if I see sellers, large sellers here, at the lower end of that gap, I'm going long. I saw large sellers, and it left behind a candle, um, a hammer-like candle to confirm the closure of that gap and so what does that mean if we've got large sellers at the bottom of a wick as soon as that wick begins to trigger to the upside they're going to need to liquidate and indeed they did until this point here where they vomited and anyone who was short with big size started to cover and I took it off at the break of this prior structure swing high as it moved into my fib level. Just so happened to have been, it just so happens to be the um, pretty much the high and, and before 
pulling back a good way, like 60 odd percent of the move and then moving higher. So that's today. I've yabbered on too much in this video. So let's, for a bit of fun, have a look at that YM trade. I'll be looking just to see uh, purely from a curiosity standpoint if it does indeed get down to whatever I said. That was 370, I think, or thereabouts. Um, yeah, 370 for a 6.1 R trade. Let's see how that goes. And I'll be back with the announcement in the next video. Bye for now. Won't you rub your fingers down?